Hello, my name is Charles and I want to welcome you to The God Principles Living in the Philippines. This video is going to be about why I'm not coming back to America. background is necessary. I'm an IT engineer in digital marketing. Back in the 80s, I was working for a corporation. I had a fancy office at 401 North Michigan, and it was at the dawn of the internet technology. What happened is, is that we were implementing technology in the corporate world. My cube mate was sent down to a plant to install some computer technology. The next day, the company was getting calls saying that there was a problem and they needed to send someone down there to fix it. My manager's manager went to him and told him he would have to go down there and straighten it out. He told him he wasn't going. This was like on a Wednesday afternoon about three o'clock and his boss say if you don't go I'm gonna have to fire you he said you ain't gotta fire me I quit and he walked out right there 401 North Michigan I told Larry Larry send me I can handle it so Larry called down to the plant and said, I'm sending my best man, he'll be there in the morning. So I came down on the night flight, coming down to Indianapolis, Indiana. Now what happened next was really even stranger. It showed how God will give you some messages just when you need them. I get in the cab, and the cab driver said, you coming here awful late. He said, where you coming from? I said, I'm coming from Chicago. He said, oh, I'm from Chicago too. And we get to chit-chatting, and he said, well, you know Indianapolis is known as Nap City. And we have a little laugh. But then he said, sir, I have to be honest with you. Do not go into the suburbs of Indianapolis, Indiana. This is the national headquarters for the Ku Klux Klan. Here it is. I've been sent down into Indianapolis, Indiana alone as an African-American man, fixing to go into a plant that I know now is going to have KKK members. And I got to go in there. I go in the next morning, dressed up, you know, back then we used to dress up this corporate casual stuff. We didn't do that. We were blue three-piece suits, ties. We were dressed. GQ, Bixby and Crothers, we really used to dress. I literally used to love that. But I go in, I sign in, and I get on the elevator. And they challenge me on the elevator. It's a true story. I get on the elevator, and this girl walks out and say, Can I see your badge? I say, What you need to see my badge for? She said, I've never seen you before. I said, Have you seen anybody else on this elevator? She said, no. I said, well, get their badges, too, because I'm not giving you mine. As a matter of fact, you go tell your supervisor that you did this. I really just stood up for myself. And so I go to see the plant manager, and he explains to me that the reason for it was they had had some thefts in the office. And I said, okay, fine. I blow that off. But now this white man has to give me a plant tour of a plant of African American men and women and white men, some of whom are KKK members. And a white man has to give me the respect and full treatment that they've never seen before. It was a very, very inspiring moment for me. And so, he took me through the plant, showed me around. I tried to speak to some African Americans, but we couldn't because this stuff moving all over your head and stuff. 
But you know how we do. We nod and acknowledge each other. Then I have to go back and straighten out this problem in this department. Now realize they don't know I'm an African American coming. And to make it even worse, the guy that was installing the system, he was an African American, he was six foot tall, he was dark as night, and he was gay. And he back there with them people. So I go back there, <laughs> And then I walk in, I say, okay, James, go over there and install this stuff. Everybody in the office, you got any problems, talk to me. I come in and take it over and I handle it, right? And so what happens after that is after we leave, we go out for drinks. I'm sitting up drinking. It's on my mind, what's going to happen now? Because we, we're in the main city for the national headquarters for the Ku Klux Klan. We don't know what's going to happen. I'm sitting there drinking, saying, okay, God, this is your thing. You didn't sent me here, and I just had to go with it. I didn't know what was going to happen. I really didn't. We left the next day, and when I got back to Chicago, I went and talked to my dad. I told him what happened. I said, he didn't teach me to back down. I, that's just not my personality. It's just not. I've been like that since I was a child, but that's another story. But the main point is, the reason I'm not going back to America is because African American men don't have any hope. We've been so, been so downtrodden throughout time that we don't have the self-esteem, the self-worth. We don't think we could, we're good enough. I ain't never had that problem personally. But without the examples to show them the way, what else are they going to do? Here in the Philippines, there are very few African Americans, and those that are here are afraid to get on YouTube. They don't want to be put out in the public like that. I don't have that problem. I did not come down here to live a secluded life. Because African American men, we need people to have leadership, and I've always done that. I've always been a leader. I've always been in technology since I was 16 before it was ever popular or anything like that. That's why I'm not leaving the Philippines or going back to America. If anything happens here, I'm just going to go to another country. I'm not going back to America. Because that, that means I would be go back defeated. And I, I'm just not me. That's just not me. So if you're looking for some assistance, some coaching on how to develop a digital lifestyle, how to transition over here to the Philippines or anywhere in the world, really, that can support a digital economy, I'm leaving a link in the description. I have a newsletter that you can sign up to for free and get free information on how to develop a business. And if you want, you can actually schedule a consultation with me. My name is Charles. This is the God Principles Living in the Philippines.